Hey everyone, Zach here. Now I know there's been a lot of hype around Tesla's Powerwall 3 since it rolled out earlier this year. Today, we're gonna compare two of the heavyweights in the battery world against each other. We're gonna have the Tesla Powerwall 3 stack up against Enphase's IQ5P battery. Both batteries are power packed and they do have their own set of perks within each of their ecosystems, but let's talk about which one is actually a better fit for your home. And don't worry, I'll talk about pricing too because what good is a review if we don't consider the that part of the equation. Let's break it down. So first up, we have the Tesla Powerwall 3. Now we all know Tesla for their electric cars, the cutting edge tech and polarizing brand. And their Powerwall series really isn't any different. The Powerwall 3 lives up to its name. It's powerful. And it's really brought a lot of buzz to the industry with some of the upgrades it's made from its previous generation Powerwall 2. Then we have Enphase and their IQ5P. Enphase is known for their ultra-reliable microinverters, and their battery game and overall ecosystem is very impressive as well. The IQ5P is all about reliability and has a smaller, more modular design that's perfect for scaling up as energy needs do grow. Now, disclaimer, Enphase's battery is a more modular system. A single 5P is going to be a pretty uncommon installation option, especially when we're talking about backup batteries like in today's video. So it's not exactly fair to compare Tesla's Powerwall 3 to just one of Enphase's 5P. All right, let's get started with section one, the big three. Let's talk numbers, capacity, power, and warranties. Usually when I talk batteries with homeowners, there's three numbers that get discussed more than any other spec or stat. The first is going to be the battery's energy capacity, which is measured in kilowatt hours. This is the size of your fuel tank. The second is going to be the battery's power output, which is measured in kilowatts or wattage. And this is your battery's horsepower. The third is, hey, how long is the warranty for? So starting with capacity, the Powerwall 3 has 13 and a half kilowatt hours of usable capacity. The Enphase 5P has a much smaller capacity at just five kilowatt hours. So to make things comparable here, we would need three of the 5P at 15 total kilowatt hours to really match Tesla's 13 and a half kilowatt hour capacity. So three 5Ps gets us right in that same range as a single power wall. Tesla does get a bit of an edge here since it statistically has the larger capacity. All right, now moving from capacity into power output, the Tesla Powerwall really impresses here at a continuous 11 and a half kilowatt output for just a single battery unit. Now for reference, this is 48 amps at 240 volts. So this is enough to charge an electric vehicle, start an AC unit, really has a lot of horsepower to back up your entire home. While the Enphase 5P has a continuous output of 3.84 kilowatts, which is 16 amps at 240 volts. This is per individual battery unit, but it can peak discharge double that. So 7.68 kilowatts for three seconds. Now that output does stack just like capacity when you add more batteries. It would take three of Enphase's 5Ps to match Tesla in this power category as well. Additionally, to achieve that whole home backup, like we mentioned earlier, my experience has been that most projects do require either one Powerwall 3 or three of the Enphase 5Ps. Now transition into warranty, I will highlight that they are both using LFP chemistry, lithium iron phosphate, which has been a standard for Enphase, but is newer to the Powerwall lineup. It's regarded as a much more durable and an extremely safe battery chemistry. So that's good news on both sides. And obviously that's some common ground that they share. Enphase's warranty is really impressive, 15 years or 6,000 cycles with a 60% energy retention. Tesla's warranty is 10 years with unlimited cycles at a 70% energy retention. Now keep this in mind, warranty is not synonymous with how long these batteries will last. Solar panels, inverters, and batteries do offer some very long warranties when compared to similar products out there in the market. So if we looked at a scorecard here, Tesla seems to have the advantage early in this comparison when it comes to specs, but Enphase clears in warranty. However, there is more to a battery and solar ecosystem than just these three numbers. Section two, let's talk about inverter architecture. This is where these two batteries are very different. Enphase operates as an AC coupled battery solution with its microinverter technology. For those who are unfamiliar with microinverters, they're small inverters that are placed directly underneath the panels and they immediately convert the solar panels produced DC power into AC power, which is what we use in our homes. And these micros do come with a 25 year warranty. Now in this situation, each panel acts independently. So this has been a very popular solution when compared to traditional string inverters, especially when you have a roof with shading concerns, multiple strings and arrays facing different directions. Now, 
will say it, it isn't quite as valuable in markets where shading is less relevant and where homes have just one to two different roof directions being used. Now, Tesla operates on a DC coupled battery solution. It has an integrated string inverter with six MPPTs. Rather having one individual inverter for each panel, you have one central inverter for your entire system. Now, the part that usually gets ignored are these MPPTs, which are maximum power point trackers. And these MPPTs, to make it simple, essentially act like a zone for a string of panels, allowing that zone to operate independently. This is pretty similar to the concept of micro inverters or even power optimizers, where you eliminate that Christmas light analogy. If one Christmas light fails, then the whole string of lights won't work. And for solar panels, it historically was if one panel fails or is shaded or underperforming, then all of the panels will suffer. Now, MPPTs really help make this positioning obsolete. So while you wouldn't have panel by panel optimization, you would still have a very viable solution. And then as far as inverter warranty for Tesla, since it's integrated in the battery unit, it has the same 10 year warranty. Now, a popular argument for micro inverters has been that you don't have one central critical point of failure for your inverter. Additionally, a popular argument for a central inverter is while you have one central point of failure, it's also a more simplified technology and has less overall points of failure. So there's arguments on both sides. Both inverters show an overall efficiency of 97, 98%, all things considered. They both do their job very well. It's purely a situational based argument in my opinion. My experience with both Tesla and n -phase inverter systems has been fantastic. So the winner here would really depend on your specific situation and your energy goals at the end of the day. Now, this is going to take us to section three, where we're going to talk about software and overall ecosystem. Software is very important with any piece of technology like this, because this is going to be your user experience with the product. It's an extension of hardware. And over time, it's going to continue to improve and make your experience even better. Honestly, both Tesla and Enphase make a great app. They both provide a ton of information on your energy history and overall system performance. Additionally, they have all of the customization you need for your battery settings, rate structure, and so on. Four side things to note about Tesla's software and ecosystem are gonna be, one, the overall user interface is beautiful. It's a very attractive app, and it's really simple to understand what you're looking at when you're viewing your energy flow and energy stats. Two, they do not have a native web-based version as of now for your monitoring. It's only app-based. However, there are third-party options. I personally use a software called Net Zero that tracks all of my system's information on another app, and they have a website as well. Three, the system has seamless EV charging integration and information sharing, whether you have a Tesla car or any other EV for that matter. And then four, there is no panel by panel monitoring since it's not using optimizers or micro inverters. However, you could integrate another optimizer manufacturer like Tygo Solution if you really wanted that information. Now, four things I would note on Enphase's software and ecosystem are one, the information that they provide is a bit more granular, especially when you get into the hardware vitals and device statuses. You can check on each individual micro inverter, battery, system controller, and so on. Two, they have a native web-based version that's available. Unlike Tesla, Tesla doesn't have a native web-based version. Three, since Enphase is using their micro inverters, they do have panel by panel monitoring and performance metrics. And then four, Enphase does offer EV charging integration like Tesla, but unlike Tesla, they have a direct generator integration where your battery can actually be charged directly from a generator and they have load shedding features with major appliances to help extend the life of your batteries in an outage type situation. For most, I'm going to call it even here since they both have their pros and cons. I don't necessarily think that it should swing your decision on its own here. If you want to test them both, they both have demo options available on their apps. Additionally, I have in-depth walkthroughs of each of their apps down in the description below. Now, section four, installation and appearance. This section is going to have two main factors. One, ease of installation installation, and then to the overall appearance. Ease of installation is really going to dictate your cost since labor and material is a big part of the scope of a project like this. Appearance is going to come down to your preference, the available installation space, and so on. You may not care about this at all, but they are correlated. The uglier a project becomes, the more expensive it is. Now, Tesla has two installation methods, depending on which transfer switch is used with its power wall. We can install with the backup switch if it's approved and possible to do so. You can find Tesla's approved utility list in the description. And other qualifying factors are your electrical panel must be rated for 225 amps or lower. And we must be able to back up every single load in your main service panel. This includes EV chargers, AC units, pool pumps, so on and so forth. Now, when it's installed with the backup switch, this is gonna give Tesla an unbelievable competitive advantage. First, it's gonna create the cleanest looking battery install in the market. You're getting whole 
home backup with an integrated inverter and it's only taking up two feet of horizontal wall space. Additionally, it's gonna create the lowest cost battery installation in the residential market due to the labor and the material save. When using the backup switch, we save in these two categories because we're not gonna have to relocate your backed up loads into a new critical loads panel. Now, if we're unable to use the backup switch, we would need to install with Tesla's traditional gateway and then relocate your backed up loads into a critical loads panel. Now, this more traditional installation technique with Tesla and their gateway would increase the cost when we compare it to the backup switch. It's still gonna be cost competitive to other manufacturers. Enphase would also use the same traditional method where we would install it with the system controller as the transfer switch, and we would also need to isolate the backup loads into a critical loads panel. As you can see here, it's a much more involved setup. Just based on dimensions alone, a single 5P is nearly the same size as a single Powerwall 3. I mean, it's a couple inches smaller, but at that size, it has only 37% of the energy capacity when it's compared. So for a statistically comparable system, three of the 5Ps versus one of the Powerwall 3, you're talking about three or even four times the amount of wall space that's required. I mean, this might not even be an aesthetics argument. This could be physically impossible to fit. I bring this up because depending on the space that you have or the footprint you want from a system like this, this is worth noting before you get surprised on install day. Tesla wins here and it's not even fair when the backup switch gets involved. Section five, we're going to talk about cost and value. This is a perfect segue into our last section, which covers estimated cost and overall value. Just like we discussed on ease of installation, when the backup switch gets involved, Tesla really has separated themselves and cost is no different. Since total cost is dictated by more than just the cost of the battery alone, the entire project scope comes into play. It's not unlike any electrical or construction project. And really to clarify with these figures, I'm going to use round numbers specific to what I have seen in the US residential market for not only myself, but also a range of competitors, including Tesla directly. This is not a representation of one specific installer and their pricing. This is also assuming the system is being installed with solar and it's not just a battery add-on system. It's also really important to note since one Powerwall 3 and one 5P wouldn't be a fair fight on paper, we are comparing one Powerwall 3 to three of Enphase's 5P batteries since those will line up more closely in overall performance. Now with Enphase and three of their 5P batteries, you'd be looking at an installed battery cost range of around 18 to 21,000. After your federal tax credit, this would put you around your 12.5 to 14.5 range. If you really like Enphase, but not the costs associated with it, you can obviously opt for less than three of these units and then scale up over time. The first unit is by far the most expensive due to all the associated parts, labor and wiring required, whether you have one or four batteries, for example. Two of the 5P is usually the industry's recommended starting point when considering a backup solution, so we certainly have a range here. Now transitioning into Tesla and their Powerwall 3, you can expect the installed cost to range in the 13 to 14,500 range. This is with the traditional method of installing with a gateway, critical loads panel, and so on. This would get you right around that $10,000 mark post-tax credit. Keep in mind as well, this includes your inverter system since that's all integrated. But here's where things really change. When you introduce that backup switch method of installation, you can expect to cut another two to $3,000 off that price tag. This is getting you right around seven to $9,000 after your federal tax credit. Costs will certainly taper down with multiple units installed as well. So if you're looking for a larger overall system, the cost wouldn't necessarily grow in a straight line from here. There's a lot to really like with both of these manufacturers and what they're doing in the industry today. I would say it's hard to dispute the price point, power output, and overall value of the Powerwall 3 when it's integrated with that backup switch. I also feel Enphase has a lot to offer with their ecosystem, their microinverter technology, and the overall warranty. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and drop your questions or thoughts in the comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next video.